Hello, traders. Welcome. If I could please have confirmation if you guys can both uh, hear me and see the screen that is presented in front of you. All right. Thank you so much, Anne. So um, if this is your first time attending one of the sessions, I want to say uh, welcome and thank you so much for attending. And uh, if you've already been uh, with us before, uh, welcome back. Um, today, we're going to be covering the Australian jobs report and, of course, the Australian dollar. And uh, before we dive into that good stuff, please uh, take a moment to read through the hypothetical trading disclaimer. Key points here are that uh, trading for an exchange on margin carries a high level of risk uh, and may not be suitable for all investors. The saying goes that leverage is like a double-edged sword, both amplifying gains and losses. Any opinions, uh, news, research, analysis that is presented for you today does uh, not constitute as investment advice and should be treated as general market commentary. And with that, let's begin. Now, as always, I like to begin these by uh, taking a look at the currency in question, doing sort of a broad sweep of where uh, the currency is, um, where it has been going, um, in addition to both the fundamentals and technicals. So uh, starting with the technicals, um, here is my Australian dollar uh, majors based index, where I am essentially looking at an average of the Aussie's value against the uh, US dollar, the Euro, the pound, and the yen. And this helps to paint a general trajectory of perhaps where uh, prices could be going um, in the near to medium um, term, which will help us then dissect the individual crosses themselves. So some key points here ahead of this jobs report. If we zoom out to the weekly chart on this index, first of all, uh, the Australian dollar has generally been on the decline really broadly speaking, since um, April 2013. There's been a downtrend here, there was a little bit of rise here, but on the whole, we've been in this slow and steady descent um, since 2017. Now, we had an aggressive drop here in, uh, er, in late January uh, as the tone in markets started to shift uh, ominously to the risk off side of things, and we'll dive into that in just a bit. And there's been a little bit of bounce here on these um, lows from 2016. Um, and then if we zoom in uh, on the daily chart, we can take a closer look over here. We could see this right here is the where it paused, was the outermost boundary of this uh, support psychological barrier. And now um, if we take a look here, there's been some consolidation, but ultimately this trend line over here is uh, maintaining this uh, near-term um, downside bias. And really I would use this as a range uh, somewhere between here and here. Now I, I'm constantly updating my uh, technicals, um, so this line might change, uh, but for the time being, the Australian dollar seems to be in just general consolidation um, mode. And um, now uh, let's uh, dive in by looking at um, the specific crosses. So the Australian dollar, uh, this one is actually looking quite um, interesting for those of you guys that have been actually following me on Twitter because I just tweeted about this um, earlier uh, today. Now, uh, focusing specifically here, uh, we can see the Aussie dollar is stuck uh, in this uh, key support range between 0 0.6672 and 0. 0.6701, and this is uh, this chart's version of this near-term descending trend line. And then, ominously speaking, um, we have this uh, emergence of positive RSI uh, divergence, which signals that momentum to the downside is actually fading here a little bit. We had actually this divergence uh, a couple of weeks ago here where we were at the same point and then we saw a near-term uh, bounce that ultimately uh, saw no further capitulation in terms of a, of a key upside breakout and now we're still facing that same point and when you got signs of fading downside momentum that can sometimes translate into a near-term reversal given confirmation now, on the flip side, if we actually do end up taking out this support range, uh, what essentially that leaves is that if we zoom out on the daily chart, 
we really aren't looking at past references for price action um, until we get to over here. Currently, the Aussie dollar is trading around here. You can see here that the next immediate psychological barrier, if we just look at past price action, is at 0 0.6249, way back in 2009. So if we go back uh, to where prices are now, uh, we're, we're not looking at that point until down here. So it's quite actually an important um, place to be here for the Australian dollar, because if we get a dismal Australian jobs report uh, that um, upholds some of these dovish expectations, then that could perhaps offer the further fuel needed to really send the Aussie dollar lower. And then uh, for reference, we're going to have to start using, um, well, at least in my experience, uh, Fibonacci extensions on the way down here. And that's generally speaking a broad picture of the Australian dollar, of where it is from a ten technical standpoint. Now let's take a look at uh, the fundamentals, which actually have been quite interesting. Now uh, there are two key aspects uh, for the fundamentals in terms of the Australian dollar. For those of you guys that are not aware, uh, fundamentals are when we are looking at how economic conditions in a given country and its currency can impact the trajectory for the future uh, rate of return, which uh, in case of the Australian dollar is where the Reserve Bank of Australia is going to be setting um, benchmark lending rates. And what's actually quite curious is that even though we've been here in a broad decline in the Aussie dollar against the US dollar, um, over the past month or so, you know, we've seen um, rosy Australian jobs data. We've seen rosy Australian uh, fourth quarter CPI data, which uh, tends to offer an improving outlook for a central bank, maybe causing it to think that perhaps it's time to start raising interest rates. Or perhaps if they're looking at cutting rates, maybe that may not necessarily be the case anymore. So despite uh, that slew of better than expected data, it really wasn't enough to alter materially a shift in the Aussie dollar um, outlook. If we look at something uh, like Aussie Yen, uh, much of the same here uh, also applies. So you can see Aussie Yen has been in a near-term uh, decline here uh, against the Japanese Yen, even though there was this quite aggressive push here, uh, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And then one of my favorite Aussie cross is actually Aussie Kiwi, uh, which you, you could actually could see the better than expected data reflected a little bit better here. You can see Aussie Q has been in a near-term rise, even though it's generally speaking in consolidation mode. Now, I'll talk a little, a little bit more about this currency later from a fundamental standpoint, but just so that you guys know, um, I view Aussie Q as more as a risk neutral. It's a currency that tends to look more at in terms of what's going on economically in um, Australia and New Zealand uh, than what's going on with stocks. This is this blue line is the spread between Australia and New Zealand, two-year government bond yields, and then this other line is the spread between Australian 10-year and New Zealand 10-year government bond yields. So focusing back on Aussie dollar and the fundamentals. So if we look at where the markets are currently pricing in um, expectations for the RBA, we got absolute almost no odds of a rate cut in March. Now that is down actually from 59% um, odds of a cut in March uh, before the February RBA uh, meeting. Um, and currently, um, we are looking um, at around 50% odds or so of a, of a RBA rate cut in June of this year, and then odds of a second RBA rate cut by December are about 47 to 50% baked in. So as far as the markets are concerned, uh, they're looking at um, most likely one cut this year and maybe give or take uh, another one. Now, I mentioned earlier uh, that uh, the near-term rate cut outlook from the RBA uh, was, um, in terms of dovish expectations, was shifted uh, a little bit um, lower. And that is because in February, the RBA essentially acknowledged that there were some downside risks, uh, particularly emanating from the uh, ongoing coronavirus outbreak in China. Uh, but that didn't yet necessarily warrant uh, for them to take immediate um, action as they look to see how uh, the case could unfold uh, because, of course, China is Australia's largest um, trading partner. And so if you get a major slowdown in China, and you know we'll talk about that a little bit later uh, once the data crosses the wires, uh, if, you get, if you get a major slowdown in Australia's largest uh, trading partner, that tends to imply some downside consequences for Australia's economy, perhaps causing the central bank to react accordingly. 
And what's actually particularly uh, curious um, is that the Australian dollar hasn't has been like, well, particularly against the U.S. dollars, it's been struggling to um, benefit with the risk on tone in markets, as re represented by this MSCI Emerging Market Index uh, index. That's been aiming a little bit higher here. And then if I pull up um, S and P 500 futures again, you can see that's been clearly on the rise. But the Aussie dollar has been uh, aiming lower. And then if you look at Aussie yen. Um, that to a certain extent also holds true. Um, it has climbed here a little bit, but not to the extent that we've seen uh, in uh, risk uh, trends. And I wonder also if looking at, yeah, see in Aussie CAD, it's also the same thing. The Aussie dollar has not been able to capitalize in this risk on tone uh, despite, um, um, despite other improvement in sentiment. And that, something to consider here, um, in addition to the interest rates, and what I'm talking about here is mostly uh, sentiment, is that in the world of uh, trading, there is what's called carry trade. That is when uh, you borrow in a cheap currency and you invest it into a more, one that yields more. And for most of the time after the financial crisis of 2008, Australian dollar was one of the most uh, liquid currencies that yielded you uh, above average in terms of the major counterparts. Since then, the Fed has raised rates while rates in Australia have been diminishing. Um, effectively undermining uh, the rate of return for the Australian dollar. So its connection here uh, with sentiment is somewhat at risk. And really the currency that has been benefiting a lot from the risk on tone has been the US dollar because rates uh, in the United States are considerably higher at this point. And markets are also quite dovish, the Fed. Uh, two rate cuts are almost uh, fully baked in at this point as well. Um, so if there is room for an improvement in tone, uh, the Fed's going to remain on top of it, is going to end up um, having to rethink about cutting rates in terms of how the markets are expected, although I think they are more neutral. Um, but you know, same thing for uh, the RBA. If the RBA is going to have to not think about uh, cutting rates anymore, it's still going to be at a disadvantage, uh, relatively speaking, um, to the Fed from, from, from a yield um, perspective. Um, and so that is a broad sweep of where the Australian dollar finds itself. Um, by the way, as, as we go through the session, I highly encourage you guys uh, to ask uh, questions, which I already see I have a couple uh, coming my way. And I'll address some of these as we get um, towards um, the uh, end of the session. Um, I see a comment here. Um, there should be an upside reversal today because bad employment numbers shouldn't be sufficient fundamental uh, shift to push price uh, past hesitation zone into uh, 65 to uh, 625. Um, um, I mean, the RBA uh, is certainly quite cautious here. Um, so if there is a dismal jobs report, that can certainly uh, help fuel rate cut expectations. And if the RBA is going to have to go closer towards zero, that would certainly undermine uh, the currency. But uh, for the time being, let's uh, zoom in on the Australian dollar and see what's going on here. We can see that it's actually aiming here a little bit lower, so it looks like we've got a little bit of a softer outcome. So, let's see, uh, not quite. So the um, Australia added more jobs than expected in January. Let's actually, let's pull up the daily effects economic calendar, and then I'll read these guys all out to you as, um, as we go. So Australia ended up adding 13.5K uh, jobs, uh, which is more than expected um, in January. Now, however, the unemployment rate actually ticked up a little bit higher uh, to 5.3% uh, from 5.2%. Uh, 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 so it, it shifted up a little bit here, a little bit more so than expected. Now, what's actually curious is that the participation rate um, actually increased uh, to 66.1%. Uh, um, economists were calling for a hold at 66%. Uh, um, but what's actually interesting is that most of the gains in the jobs report uh, came from the full-time sector. That Those added 46.2K, while those in the part-time sector contracted about 32.7K. Um, now, um, if we look here at the Australian dollar, um, you can see that uh, it's quite struggling here to capitalize on this downside move, and it's broadly a little changed here because overall this was a mixed jobs report. Yes, the country added more jobs than expected, but hey, it's employ unemployment rate ticked up. But what's actually interesting here is that uh, the participation rate increased as unemployment increased. So what that maybe signals uh, here is that 
even um, that um, these additions to the labor force, the people uh, that re-entered it and were trying to seek uh, a new job, maybe perhaps uh, some of them couldn't find them, and hence the uptick uh, in unemployment and whatnot. Um, and so what you get on balance is a mixed jobs report and an Australian dollar that ends up trading uh, mostly sideways. Um, and and like I mentioned uh, earlier in the session, as we've seen from the last uh, Australian jobs report and from the latest inflation report, Australian dollar um, hasn't been really able to generally uh, capitalize uh, to the upside on uh, rosy uh, fundamentals, uh, be, uh, the domestic fundamentals, likely due to more external um, concerns. All right, uh, and so with that in mind, uh, let's start talking a little bit in terms of where the Australian dollar uh, can go uh, from here. So if we were to not think about uh, where interest rates are going for just a moment um, here, because uh, you don't really have that much domestic uh, economic event risk for the Australian dollar left, I believe, this week, if we pull up the calendar here, and then if we look uh, over the next few days, as far as this week is concerned, uh, we're pretty much done uh, with the broad uh, major data. Next week, we'll get uh, private capital expenditures that, that might be worth uh, watching. But uh, with um, that in mind, so in terms of where we could go from here. So obviously, a key factor, as I mentioned earlier, has, has been what's going on uh, with general uh, risk trends. So if we zoom in on the 15-minute chart here and just focus on what happened over the past 24 hours because I thought that was actually quite interesting. Um, if we, uh, if I pull up here the S&P 500 futures, you can see the divergence uh, between the pro-risk Aussie um, against the U.S. dollar because the U.S. dollar has been tending uh, to capitalize on um, rising yields, um, improving outlook uh, from the Fed, which is undermining the Australian dollars. Uh, somewhat appeal. So maybe this could perhaps translate into general lower levels of volatility um, in the Aussie, which has been the case um, so far for uh, this uh, month. So something that I thought was actually quite um, interesting um, over the uh, past 24 hours uh, is what we saw from the uh, Fed minutes, because of course, um, we're going to focus here a little bit on what the outlook for equities could be, because that's very important to something like the Australian dollar. So if we look at what the FOMC minutes uh, said, uh, they basically continue to underscore the divide between um, dovish expectations and a more neutral uh, tone from the central bank. Now, my uh, colleague, uh, Thomas Westwater, actually did a market alert on the FOMC uh, minutes, and you could check out his report on daily effects uh, there. Um, but uh, if we take a look um, at what are some of the important things um, that... Um, were mentioned. One of the things that I'm quite closely watching is what's going on with the balance um, sheet and their ongoing uh, repo operations. In fact, uh, my colleague um, Peter Hanks, uh, him and I, we did um, a special report on these Fed repo operations, why they are, they are important and why uh, they may impact uh, equities. Um, and so allow me to give you a brief rundown there. So this chart in the background is uh, this blue area is the Fed uh, balance sheet. Uh, the red line um, is the uh, S&P 500 and the yellow line is gold prices. Now, back in September of last year, there was a cash shortage um, in the U.S. financial uh, system, in which the Fed had to step in to provide near-term liquidity. Um, and it did this through what's called uh, repurchasing uh, operations, where essentially um, the Fed, what it does is in exchange for collateral, such as uh, U.S. Treasuries, um, and of course, uh, interest, uh, it will lend out and loan out money um, to uh, entities that need the cash temporarily, uh, usually on an overnight basis and on a 14-day uh, um, basis. Um, and this helps to bring down um, borrowing costs and keep them within their 1.5 to 1.75% um, target. Um, and as a result of these operations, their balance sheet has uh, been swelling in a similar way that we saw um, in the aftermath of the um, 2008 financial crisis. Uh, that's this chart over here. You can see the swelling of the Fed's balance sheet. And when there was an unwinding of the balance sheet indicating you know, rates were rising, uh, liquidity uh, conditions and uh, were tightening, um, there was some distortion here in the S&P 500. And then since then, we've 
the Fed has essentially reversed over half of its um, unwinding efforts um, in its balance sheet, which has helped to push um, equity prices um, higher. And then uh, what the Fed has been signaling um, as of late um, is that they are going to slowly start looking at trimming the size of their repo operations in the near term. And what that would lead to is a balance sheet that is going to moderate in the first half of this year as outstanding repos decrease slowly. So what that means is that uh, their pace of swelling the balance sheet is arguably going to uh, slow and maybe start unwinding in the near term. That is a clear uh, downside risk for equities, uh, which is actually a downside fundamental risk for something like uh, the Australian dollar, particularly against something like the Aussie yen, which is tends to be more um, closely aligned uh, with risk trends, which you can see that when you compare it to something like the MSCI um, Emerging Markets um, Index. Um, furthermore, um, there is a neutral tone, I think, if I were to summarize what the Fed's view is, uh, because they see rates as currently as appropriate um, in the near term, at least, and the markets are expecting uh, one cut this year with odds of a second cut um, over 50% uh, baked in. So if uh, the Fed is right this time and they do not intend on changing rates in the near term, then the market expectations are going to have to adjust uh, to that outlook unless the Fed adjusts to the market outlook for whatever reason. Um, and that is another downside fundamental risk for something like the Australian dollar, which is quite vulnerable to um, risk uh, trends. And furthermore, uh, that would un under, under, un underscore um, the Fed's uh, yield advantage over the RBA, which is something uh, that could pressure perhaps Aussie um, dollar lower. And the other key concern for the Aussie dollar is the impact that the coronavirus could have on China's economy, which is at this point is largely expected to slow. Um, Japan, Japan's economy, there's been rising risks of recession there as well, after its economy shrunk by the most um, quarter of a quarter since 2014, it was over 6%, it was quite a, an aggressive decline. Um, and so if there's concerns mounting over a global growth, that is something that is also a downside risk for the Australian dollar. And as I mentioned, uh, we are seeing some near-term technical signals that could perhaps um, offer here a near-term boost uh, to Aussie if there is fading um, downside um, momentum. I have some questions here. If it pops up, uh, what levels uh, should we be targeting? So um, I have this uh, trend line here drawn as key uh, resistance. And then um, obviously, if there is a bounce above here, and we get a through, and we get through this uh, descending uh, trend line. Uh, the next immediate, uh, I think, close level to watch will be around 0 0.6755 uh, five, five, because this is where prices were consolidating um, in the upper bound. If we get a close through this line, and perhaps if we take out these highs over here, uh, that could pave the way uh, to retest this psychological barrier at 0 0.6849 over here. And then really for the Australian dollar in the bigger picture, in the long-term picture, for it to be able to really pop up higher and for it to be able to uh, reverse aggressive declines, we're going to have to get above uh, the late December slash early uh, January peak over here. So if you take a more medium to long-term outlook for um, Aussie dollar, um, then I'll be closely watching this point over here. In the near term, if there is a bounce, then I'll probably look to perhaps somewhere in between uh, this uh, range. And actually something quite, uh, I think, of a similar sort in Aussie yen, if there is room for there to be upside progress to be had in Aussie yen, if um, there is continuous to be improvement in sentiment, uh, to be able to, the key psychological barrier to take out is are, are these highs over here. That's where the currency pair got stuck last time, uh, which you can see aligns with levels back here. If, we, if, if there's a rise here, we take out this area followed by this area. After this break above this uh, descending channel, that'll send us on our ways to points that we haven't seen uh, since April uh, 2019. Looking back here at um, Aussie dollar, um, there's actually something else of another tool that I like to use that uh, is actually pointing to some interesting uh, signals. Uh, so for those of you guys that have been uh, following me for some time, every week I host a session where I'm essentially looking at um, how traders are positioning themselves in given currency pairs, uh, including the Australian dollar. Uh, it is another element uh, in addition to the fundamental analysis and in addition to the technical 
analysis. Um, because often what you see is that when most traders are long a given currency pair and they become increasingly long a currency pair, that currency tends to weaken in value and vice versa. So, and we could see these signals from IG client sentiment if you go to dailyfx.com slash sentiment. And what's curious is that the current outlook for the Australian dollar is actually pointing um, bearish. So allow me to uh, expand on that just a little bit uh, further here. This is uh, in addition to the fundamentals and technicals. It's a third element that I like to use um, that is currently seem to be pointing towards the downside scenario. So this is a chart of IG client sentiment where in the background, uh, this is the Australian dollar. And this blue line and red line is uh, the positioning level. So when this line shifts from red to becoming blue, um, this tells you more and more people are going long. So at the beginning of February, about 80% of um, traders, as reported by IG client sentiment, were long um, Aussie dollar. This was from a low of just around 43% long bias back at the beginning of January. And during this time, when we saw an increase in long positioning from 43% upside bias to 80% upside bias, um, the Aussie dollar fell almost over 4.85% in value. And so what IG client sentiment does is that uh, every day um, we get updates on how the changes in positioning are occurring on a day-to-day -day and a week-to-week -week basis. And then um, combining these factors gives you the current outlook and that is pointing in the bearish side of things. So IG client sentiment seems to be pointing in the downside scenario um, for Aussie dollar. Uh, technicals, there is a side of caution um, in that we got some positive RSI divergence indicating fading downside momentum and that could perhaps let, send to a surge to the upside. That just leaves the fundamentals. And um, what's very curious and uh, speaks to actually underlying fundamental weakness is when something like a pro-risk currency like the Australian dollar uh, can't quite benefit from good economic data, from improvement in market mood, um, that um, tends to um, undermine uh, its performance and perhaps speak to a dovish bias. Um, and so if you were to combine the fundamentals and the technicals and trader psychology and, and you look at those individual points, um, the technicals could be erring on the side of caution while, our, while sentiment is pointing downward, where the fundamentals might actually be pointing downward as well. So if you use a two to three uh, majority um, method, um, perhaps that could give you impetus uh, to perhaps um, go short or go long, depending on your outlook. Now, me personally, um, I hesitate to take action on uh, any given really currency pair when I am currently in the middle of a key psychological barrier uh, because they could speak to a uh, turning point. And if there is a downside breakout, I would then look for confirmation. And what I mean by confirmation is that, okay, we get a downside close and then another downside close because all, too many, uh, too often what happens in financial markets is that you get false upside breakouts. And sometimes they can be almost immediate and sometimes they can be, uh, um, um, more medium term. So, for example, I was looking at Aussie dollar and I was looking at this resistance line that went back to uh, November 2018. And then I noted over here that it broke above it. And then uh, we broke above these highs. So, if you were just looking at where Aussie dollar was here, well, maybe that's perhaps clear uh, upside bias. But you can see that ended up being a false breakout and now we're pointing lower. And so, that is why it's very important when you look at uh, currency pair, especially technical analysis, uh, to look for that confirmation. Now, another currency pair that I've also been closely watching is Aussie CAD because um, with the BOC, uh, just like the Fed, it has one of the highest rates of the major central banks. And um, over the past um, 24 hours, uh, we actually did get um, quite the impressive um, Canadian uh, inflation report. So if we go here on the calendar, we could see that Canadian CPI in January was 2.4% uh, versus 2.3% year over year, which of course undermines Dowish uh, Bank of Canada expectations. And I would note here that Aussie CAD here has actually broken below uh, this. October psychological barrier, uh, where here was here is the first low, here was the second test, and then if you zoom out actually to 2010, you can actually could see uh, where this psychological area began back over here. You can see that the next 
immediate uh, reference price seems to be at 0.8582, which was the low here from um, May of 2010. So here, Aussie CAD has broken lower, but um, and if there's a downside close to be had here under this chart, then perhaps we are due here for further declines in Aussie CAD to perhaps down here, um, and I'd be perhaps interested to see uh, if there's any uh, opportunities to be had there. Um, certainly, uh, if the BOC remains on hold, maintains that higher rate against the Australian dollar, uh, and actually being short Aussie CAD is one of my actually top uh, trading um, opportunities for this year, and so far that's been uh, playing out. All right, so with that in mind, um, I hope uh, that uh, addresses some of your guys' questions um, and uh, concerns. We talked a little bit about uh, what would happen to the Aussie dollar if it popped here a little bit um, higher. We talked a little bit about what the jobs report means for the RBA um, outlook. And we talked a little bit about another cool tool that you could use in your own trading strategy. And by the way, if you guys want to uh, join me for uh, further detailed discussions into trader psychology and why that's important for uh, future price trends, you guys uh, should check on check out uh, dailyfx.com slash webinars and you can sign up for my session there by clicking register for my event and then uh, you'll be able to stay up to date with uh, when I'm hosting these and if there are any changes in time. But typically I host these on uh, Wednesdays at 1 o'clock GMT. And uh, with that in mind, uh, that uh, actually wraps us up here for the Australian Jobs Report coverage. Um, please do take a moment to read through the hypothetical trading disclaimer one more time. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the session, if this guy, if this was your first time attending one of these sessions, I hope that you guys um, have learned uh, something uh, new and found this uh resource useful. If you guys want to uh, follow me on Twitter and ask further questions there, feel free to reach out at um, at D Dabrowski, capital F, capital X. Um, and for those guys that uh, joined me before, I want to thank you for uh, participating in these once more. And I hope to see some of you guys next week uh, when I'll be taking a look at trader psychology once more. But until then, have a good one and take care.